Evening all, um, welcome to our very first podcast. Uh, this is called The Experience. This is what the podcast series will be called. Uh, I'm James, um, I'm an employee of XP Esports, and joining me tonight is Hamish. Hey guys, how are we doing? Um, like James said, my name's Hamish. Um, I've been with the company for just over a year now. Um, just give you a bit of background on myself. I came from a previous organization um, that focused on team managing. Um, got brought into XP here uh, in Brisbane to try and harbor some talent within the Brisbane region as well as grow some events that we were already hosting. Um, like at the moment we're doing Fortnite, um, we are pretty well versed in Call of Duty um, as well as a bit of FIFA, um, NBA 2K, um, any others you can think of? Off the top of my head? That's pretty much everything that we have on the tables for now. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, in the future, we'll branch into more games, um, but that's a story for another day. Yes, of course. Um, but XP, we have a pretty big history. We first started out, um, our director, Brady, he, similar to other big companies around like Google, started in a, um, just in his garage, he did some local lands, which is where he met and created a strong partnership with our IT guru, uh, Alex, who together they just kept growing this brand into what it's become today, which in my opinion is quite huge. Mm, um, especially for Queensland. Yeah, it's, it's a very small market some would consider. Everyone refers to Melbourne and Sydney being the, the big hubs of uh, Australian esports, but we're looking to change that and, and bring esports up to Queensland. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I guess you could probably talk about a bit of your history. Um, you used All to right. compete in some of our events. Yes. And you've also done Halo. So Yeah, so um, I've done Halo on and off for, I would say, since Halo Reach. Couldn't really compete in any Reach events, though, because I was too young. I just played the MLG online tournaments. Yep. Um, Halo 4 rolled around, I played in the solo championships, uh, missed out on a place to go overseas, which was a real bummer, but then Halo 5 rolled around and I got the chance to take a team down to Sydney to compete in the Halo World Championship leg, which was held in Sydney. It was a really good experience to be able to go down and see what an actual LAN was like, because that was my very first one. Um, yeah, it was very a very new experience for me and I was glad that I was getting into the getting into the industry from there and then when Fortnite came out um, I played a lot of that still play a lot of it at the moment <laughs> um, yeah so from Fortnite I pretty much started playing semi professional you could say um, and then I found an XP esports um, through their events for with Fortnite um, went to a few of them actually and then got the opportunity came up for a for volunteers to join the company and that's when I came in for the Call of Duty land earlier this year and that's my history all the way leading up to XP. Yeah, and that's the Call of Duty land in June? Yes. Yeah. Um, so that was a pretty big um, milestone for XP. It was the biggest land we've ever held. Um, I know, speaking from myself, I love the Call of Duty community. Um, and I love bringing events for these guys to come and compete in. Um, so to talk on top of that, um, obviously there's a new, new Call of Duty coming out in Modern Warfare. Um, XP is definitely looking to be doing something within that space. Um, I'm pushing to begin with something online. Yeah. A good league system that makes sense and that will keep teams together rather than splitting up and potentially get some organizations involved with that yeah. because I feel like that's something that's lacking is some organizations are a bit slow with Call of Duty to get on board but with the right competition um, and space for it to be in that's uh, casted and shown online and it gives them something to um, to show their viewers who follow their own teams and whatnot. Exactly, yeah. Um, so that's, that's definitely something I'm pushing for myself. Um, it's just a lot of background work for that um, to get it done. But on top of that, obviously as you can see behind us, we have our Fortnite banners that um, 
were from our Fortnite crossover with the Broncos recently um, at Suncorp Stadium. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about your experience with that? Okay, so the Broncos Royale, um, it, the all of the lead-up events to it were held at UQ, and that's where the finals were held for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but more on the Broncos side, we were at Suncorp Stadium, when was it? Uh, August 30th? Yeah, August 30th, somewhere around that day, about two weeks ago. Yeah, roughly like two and a half weeks ago. Um, we were there, had a Fortnite free play area, which went really, really well. We had members of the Broncos come through, sit mm-hmm. down, play some video games, got to teach. Yeah, you got to yeah. play with one of them yourself. I got to play with one of them myself, got to teach them the ropes on how to use a keyboard and mouse. Uh, that, was, that, was, that was really fun. That night was really good. Uh, yeah. It definitely brought a lot of exposure, not only to us, but the fact that someone like the Broncos like the, as a team is willing to take break, a step forward take a step forward yeah. and get more people and get younger people in especially yeah yeah, um, 100%. yeah and it gives families the opportunity to just to have a good time and enjoy themselves hmm. well I guess that brings up a good point that we're now seeing these big brands branch into esports it's a massive up-and-coming industry so with you speaking about your experience going down for Halo 5 Looking at what esports was then to what it is now, like what differences do you see? Um, in Australia, well, definitely in Australia, I see like a lot more of our sporting teams getting involved. Mm-hmm. Um, especially, mainly rugby teams. Yep. Um, we have the big land centre opening down in Melbourne. Yeah. Yep. Um, us ourselves, we're we're doing very very well with our events. We have. What, the launch of FIFA 20, we're hosting the yeah. event with that. Mm-hmm. Um, that'll be good. Uh, we also have our Fortnite Solos Championship, um, which is coming up as well. On the 5th of October. 5th of October, yes. So that's Solos Championship 8, um, which is looking to probably, again, break records and be one of our biggest. Yeah. Um, I think we've usually had about 80 plus at our recent ones. We're looking to hopefully soon break the 100 mark. Yeah, um, that'll be good. Just keep that player base coming, um, grow the grassroots, um, and yeah, keep them coming back for more. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that brings up a good point as well for grassroots, especially mm-hmm. in Queensland. There really isn't anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, we are bringing definitely a scene for Fortnite and Call of Duty. Yeah, as cool. well and other games that people can play competitively. Uh, it's giving a lot of people an opportunity to come play in a more competitive competitive environment. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is what I love. I love seeing everyone together interacting, like winning. Mm-hmm. It's, it's great, especially for the younger generation as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know how people can do it, but young kids are just really good at Fortnite. It's yeah. just it's just a standard now. I've I've tried it. Um I don't have many hours, probably because I threw the towel in a bit too early. You definitely it's, did. It's very hard to get your head around this. Way too many buttons for me. <laughs> um I'm very basic with my gaming. Um but when we did the event um at the Echo as well, I saw all these young kids coming in with their parents and they were phenomenal and yeah. they tend to th- 10 to 13 year olds and they're just blowing blowing up and and knowing exactly what they're doing 100% of the time and to think that these young minds are about to come through and when they hit that 13 14 year old year old age group and can compete competitively in Fortnite I think I think that's going to step up the game once again definitely definitely yeah um, but in saying all that hopefully this is an age group that we can capture early as well um, and grow them stronger again. Um, so that's a bit of a future that we hope to hold. Um, going back though on what you said with FIFA 20, we do have um, a Season 7 launch, which is going to be based around when FIFA 20 is launching. FIFA 20 is looking like a pretty good game yeah. um, from the players that run under XP for that. Um, Dylan, he's told us that it, it is looking strong. Um, and we hope to capture, again, the grassroots and have a competition that will run locally um, as well as go online. Um, and in saying that, we also hope 
to sorry we don't hope we are, we are. partnering up with uh, Prestige Esports down is it your way yeah down my way um, don't know exactly where they are I'll find that out we'll find out but essentially we're partnering up with Prestige to try and combine some of the local stars in FIFA that we've found obviously it, we're a bit more north side based of Brisbane um, they're a lot further down on the south side so hopefully Capalaba Capalaba okay so hopefully bring those two smaller communities together to create a bigger competition um, this this is a major event for both of us on board yeah um, definitely but as well as this we still have the Brisbane Raw backing it um, because we are trying our best to feed into them for the um, FIFA E-League in Australia which is broadcasted to Fox um, as well as Twitch when it's live um, which runs alongside the A-League yeah um, I'm glad that we are forming the the friendships and partnerships, partnerships and that we have with Prestige with mm-hmm. UQ yep. um, it's definitely something very exciting especially for just gaming in general in Queensland. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a huge state that has a lot of potential. Probably notably one of our biggest downfalls is we're very spread out. Yes. Um, but as times are changing, obviously Telstra 5G is launching soon. That might bump things up. If we can get the right network and get the right people on board, it can make sense that this can become a big esports hub in Queensland. Yes. Um, there's, for example, our raw player is from up north um, for FIFA. So we we found him through lots of trial and error, you could call it, and um, it's turned out to be a phenomenal player. Yeah. So that's that's what we came. Uh, that's what XP, sorry, I should say, has always been um, on a base level is trying to find talent and and grow it and harbour it into what it could be. Yeah. Um, because everyone deserves a chance. Exactly. In a shot. So that's what we're just trying to do here. Yeah. Well, bringing on more of what you said about, like, growing everything, like, mm-hmm. XP, experience. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like, that's the name of the podcast is experience. Yeah, 100%. Like, we're just, we're giving an experience to people that can't afford to travel to different states for events. Yeah. It's... Mm-hmm pretty much boils down to that and it's good yeah the fact that we are um, we are able to hold a call of duty land in brisbane and still pull teams from different states yeah definitely a big thing considering most of the player base for not only call of duty but for a lot of other games is sydney and melbourne yeah it's good that people are willing to come up here and it just goes to show that in in time queensland will definitely be on up there with Sydney and Melbourne. Yeah, yeah. Um, like for the Call of Duty side of it, going on back to that, we had teams travel from New Zealand even, um, which we, I guess you could say, feel honoured that you guys do that. Um, which is why we want to keep bringing you these competitions that you love and that you want to keep happening. Yeah. Um, we we know you'd love to compete internationally um, in America and whatnot, but that's a hell of a lot of money that not many people get the opportunity to do so if we can if we can create something that is on par with that over the next three four years yeah it'll be phenomenal what the outcome could be so um every region could have its own pro league like if you look at overwatch there's yeah. a contenders league in australia which look feeds Rain- into the pro league look at rainbow six rainbow six the exact same yeah. so Especially with Call of Duty going to franchising, um, that's a huge step, in my opinion, in the right way. Um, at first, I thought it, it killed a lot of avenues for different things, but I think now that I've read more into it and they've released more, it's it is pretty good. Yeah. Um, you've got obviously your main roster of five, but you've got up to seven or nine players you yeah, can sign. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's nine. Yeah, yeah. which and the inclusion of um, in-series substitutions. Um, so you can, you've got your search and destroy specialists, they can come in and, and wipe out rounds for your team. Yeah. Which 
is a very different take on what we've seen before in traditional esports. Exactly. Like, I really just hope that what Call of Duty have done on the beta for the upcoming game, I really hope that they work on it. Not necessarily to redo it or anything, mm -hmm. but all of like the little problems like ironed out. Like, to me, I love the beta. Yeah, the beta was really fun. I know people complain about the whole mini map situation, but to me, a competitive game, you need to know where your spawns are and be aware of the map at all times anyway. Yeah. You don't need a mini map to tell you what to do. Yeah. Like you take games like Halo for example, then their version of a mini map is a sensor. Okay. So if somebody sprints by, yeah, it's going to pop up on your on your map, but not necessarily like because I remember in Black Ops 4, the the map itself was very detailed mm -hmm. on all of the corners and avenues and stuff you could take. I really reckon they're just trying to take a step back to what the older Call of Duties were like, yeah. which is a step in the right direction mm -hmm. for Call of Duty, definitely. Like, the way that the game looks, the way that it feels, everything is perfect to yeah. me. And the, the game itself was running smooth, running fine. Oh, yeah. It was just small little tweaks here and there that they adjust on the way and make it into another fantastic game. This Call of Duty is definitely looking to be probably the best one that they've released in, in my opinion, since Black Ops 2. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Which I think that, in combination with the huge investment into franchising and all of that, there's a big year ahead for Call of Duty, which, okay, understandably that's all looking like a big pro league scene, but that all filters down into into the other regions as well. Yeah, exactly. Because just because there's, I think, 10, 12 slots sold now for franchising, there's going to be a future for more, Yeah. Um, which hopefully um, APAC can have a team. Hopefully. You've, you've got a Paris team, you've got a London team. Um, so you've got European teams. There's nothing saying that Australia Pacific can't have one. Yeah, like... Um, and in saying that, we saw last year a huge improvement in the Japanese scene. Oh, yes. So oh, if you, yes. you consider having a Japan spot and a, um Australian-New Zealand spot, that's huge. Yeah, like, I know our region we lack on the fact that we don't have very decent internet. Mm-hmm. But, um, again, it doesn't really stop us from always learning and always growing with the game. Yeah. Especially since this is kind of taking Call of Duty and taking a step back. This is going to reset most skill gaps. Yeah. Obviously, most people will still remember how to play and all that, but it resets that gap where everyone has to train again. Mm. And it's whether or not people are willing to put in the effort to train. That's the difference that makes and break whether or not a region will work. Yeah. I've noticed that with so many other esports, like, for example, Halo. We are very much at a disadvantage there because mm -hmm. we don't have dedicated servers here. Mm -hmm. But it's just the fact that constant effort is definitely going to be the main factor on whether or not our region will get a slot. I really reckon we will. Mm -hmm. It's just hopefully um, overseas can see that we are putting in the effort yeah. and yeah. that the teams that we have are ready to compete on that level. Exactly. And I think that's, that's a very give and take scenario. Um, we're trying our best to provide what we can for you, for you guys to compete and to develop your own skills. Um, but it's going to take a lot of effort on your behalf as well to, to keep competing and, and to stick to your teams and grow as a team. Um, some of the best teams around don't swap rosters. No. You look at the Mind Freak roster, which is arguably probably the best in Australia, 100% um, for probably the past four or five years plus. I would say so, yeah. Um, they haven't changed. They they have a couple in out here and there. Um, but the core roster itself... Yes, 100%. Yeah. It, it's always been there. Obviously, this year, when it moved to teams of five, we had to get an extra one in. Um, so, they picked up Luca, um, which was a phenomenal pickup. 
but what will be interesting now is to see if this minefreak roster will get spots um, on the starting rosters or the, the substitutes in these mm. pro league teams because I think probably all of them deserve one yeah right. uh, they've put in a phenomenal effort Black Ops 4 was their game for the taking in the um, Mountain Dew Amateur League you could call it it's just a shame that they, they had that one bad day that one bad run and yeah. it wasn't to be but going second first first in three three yeah. open brackets it shows a, a good team um, but it's a it's a team that you want to keep together yeah um, I don't think unless like we say Australia got a got a slot it's hard to keep that team together yeah like um that kind of feeds into what we want out of Call of Duty mm -hmm. hopefully with the release of a new Call of Duty means we're going to be doing hopefully online leagues at least online leagues to begin with just to just to get you guys doing something um, it can show us <coughs> where the scene's at um, who's competing <coughs> who's coming to the scene who's leaving the scene all of those things and from the people I speak to and I know no one's going anywhere yeah exactly um, like it's just the fact that we we want people to stay as a team yes that is the biggest thing that way the whole community grows in the aspect of everyone becomes a family. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's kind of difficult to say that, but it's it's good to form relationships with your team. Definitely, it's it's how teams work. It's mm -hmm. like look overseas; they live and breed the same air in the same house. Yeah, it's like yes, some sometimes it's hard for that, but it's getting everyone on board, getting everyone to stay on board and stay with the same teams. That way that you can grow together. Mm -hmm. Yes, it'll be hard because some players may on teams may be better than others, but it's just the whole point of putting in the effort and yeah. making sure everyone stays with each other, making sure everyone grows together. Mm -hmm. That's that's definitely a big thing, especially in grassroots as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard thing to, to get into people sometimes, like they're set in their ways, but like you say, create a, create a family community that can stick together and, and have each other's backs and whatnot, and you'll see this scene grow twice over. Yeah. Um, because we know how big it can be and how big it has been, um, but that, that's the same for any community. Like, we're obviously trying to look for our own future and see what games we want to move into. Um, we can't unfortunately say any of that to you guys. But there is some big games out there that... Wish we could, but we are just not allowed to. Yeah, so it is unfortunate. But like I say, big games out there that um, we want to bring more land-style events for those things. Yeah, exactly. Um, and in saying that, there's even some games that aren't out yet that we think could go off. Um, I know, I can't think of the name of it, but there's a new Ubisoft game coming up. It's the the rollerblade one, roller derby, the roller derby one. Like that, that looks really fun and interesting. Yes. Um, a, a different concept on gaming again, similar yeah. to how similar, we, how, like, how it's similar how Rocket League worked. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But you think of a game like that, like I I take myself back before Fortnite existed, mm. and Fortnite dropped in, and it was like this whole new game style, this whole new. Um, visual game style as well and it's what took the world by storm yeah it wasn't what you I would say the more mainstream esports were like yeah. Call of Duty Halo Rainbow Six yeah all first-person shooters yeah they, they weren't just dropping in an old FPS they they changed it and they made it into something of its own league you could yeah. say um, yes people argue that PUBG is very similar Obviously, PUBG is FPS style, and I think PUBG still has a fairly strong eSport. Oh, yeah, it, and it definitely. It is something that I'd love to get into. Um, it's just quite difficult because it is, it's a squad game mode base, mm. and to get 20 squads of four into a room, it's a very big footprint mm. um, compared to... Yeah, it's the same footprint as, like, 
80 solo competitors in Fortnite, but it's just a whole different setup. It's a whole different atmosphere. And yeah, exactly. Like. So I think PUBG has its place in the esports industry. Um, it's just a hard one to create something land style for. Yeah, like um, when PUBG was at its height, um, they had people like what, Ninja and things like Ninja that. Play? Yeah, yeah nin- Ninja played PUBG for like ages. Okay. Um, but like they had a lot of the competitive players that moved to Fortnite because it was new. It was different. Mm-hmm. There was the whole building aspect of it. Mm-hmm. But PUBG was the first battle royale style game mode mm-hmm. that turned properly into an esport and it worked yeah um it's uh, like you said it's finding places where you can actually fit like a hundred people in yeah that's yeah. that's the difficult that's a difficult thing plus mm-hmm. spectators plus yeah. commentators yeah. yeah um that's definitely very very hard to do mm-hmm. in saying that a Fortnite land would be pretty cool like a proper Fortnite land. It's definitely something that I'd love to do myself. Definitely. Um, seeing what we do for these solo championships and whatnot, and just only having a limited of 30 in a room, seeing the competition there, seeing how good some of these players are. Yeah. I can only imagine if we could get 60 to 100 in one room, all playing at once in the same custom server. Yeah. It, it would go nuts that would um, yeah it um, kind of leads on to like where where we are going yeah of course like we we're always looking to develop um and there's there's no wrong way to do it yeah um there's just a lot of right ways and not enough manpower yeah um so a lot of trial and error yeah we would we would love to host every game under the sun and have an online league for it all and have a land for all of them but for essentially a team of four it's mm. it's quite difficult to get all of this done because there's a lot of background work and an effort that goes into it um so i guess that kind of leads into us wrapping up here a little bit yeah but we want to hear from you guys as a community whether it is call of duty esports in general, Fortnite, anything like that, hit us with some feedback and some questions. Um, we asked earlier in the week or last week for some. Yeah, but, well, it was pretty early on this week. It was pretty sure on Monday. Yeah. Um, we, didn't, we didn't get any responses, which kind of sucked. Um, it is the way sometimes. It is the way sometimes. It's the way of the road. Um, yeah. But hopefully, since this is, this is our first podcast, um, we just wanted to let you guys know that we are, we are doing this platform now mm-hmm. and we hope it really does gain some traction yep. that way we can speak about the things that we love like yeah. we can talk about games we can talk about things that are happening in the esports industry within the gaming industry yeah because every week there's something new popping up yeah and it's it's taking the world by storm so we can only imagine what's happening in APAC at the moment yeah like we wanna we wanna know what you guys like what your what your opinions on things are. If you throw us some questions, that way we can answer them during during the podcasts. Mm-hmm. Anything anything you can think of, just let us know. Yep. We are more than willing to talk about specific subjects within esports and and gaming. Yeah. And yeah. even what we are doing outside of yeah, like you, outside of that. If you wanna if you wanna know more about us. Let us know. We'll we'll talk about it. Yeah, we all have our own little lives as well. Yeah. Um, so feel free to send us a private message if you want to keep it anonymous or comment on any of our posts and whatnot. But um, yeah, like James said, we're happy to try and answer anything that you have questions about, or if we don't know, find out for you. Yeah. Because we really want to um, grow, like you say, this platform and um, really start getting. Um, APAC on the map more than it is already. Yeah, so where we're going over the next few weeks I would say is we have our FIFA tournament coming up. Yep. Uh, what day is that? September 26th. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's a day before full launch of the game. Yeah, so I think um, pre-launch is the 25th. We take it on 
We have a competition on 26th. 26th. Oh, Thursday night. I'll have, a, I'll have a look. And then full game watches on the day after. Um, but like we mentioned earlier as well, we have the uh, Solo Championship 8 uh, coming up on October 5th. Um, FIFA? Uh, so FIFA, it, so the FIFA Series 7 launch um, mm-hmm. tournament is on September 26th. Pretty sure that one is sold out now. We were getting close okay. to it. Yeah. Um, there were October fifth is the Solos Championship, mm-hmm. um, and then mm-hmm. October seventeenth is the XP FIFA Series Amateur Open Qualifier. Number one. So number one. And I think that's the one that is partnered up with Prestige. Yes, it is. Um, who will be hosting qualifying number two um, down at Cabela Bar at um, their land center setup. Um, so feel free to compete in both. Uh, we'd love to have you. Yes. Um, the more to compete, the more um, so yeah. more fun we can have. So thir- thirty spots for FIFA are already gone. Okay. For the um, season seven launch. So okay. if you guys want to get in, shout us a DM. Let us know. If, we'll tell you if there's any more spots. I don't know off the top of my head if they are. All I know is that it was getting pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just shout somebody a DM from XP. We'll let you know mm-hmm. and get your slot. Alright, yeah. That sounds about. That sounds everything. about all. That's all for today. Yes. Um, um, we're going to try and make these weekly. So hopefully, um, this will happen again next week. Um, and yeah, we'll just find some articles through the week that are popping up um, in our region and even out of the region. And just talk about them and anything else that you guys want to know about. Yeah, all good. Sound good? See you guys. See ya.